Hi and welcome to Netcafe. Today we're going to look at job interview questions for the positions that involve Ansible, such as for example DevOps or Cloud Engineer. We'll look at both theoretical and practical examples of the questions that you might be asked. We'll write some comments, we'll create some playbooks, we're going to look at the different uh, features of Ansible. And well, I hope that it will help you to land your dream DevOps job. Well, let's jump to it. A good starting point while discussing Ansible is to explain what problem does this tool really solve. So here you can get the first question is to explain what is configuration management. You can simply explain that in the past we have to do our configuration manually and that of course has its significant disadvantages such as for example human errors or it takes time, it was a tedious work for engineers and if you have for example thousands of Linux servers from the perspective of Linux admin or routers for the network perspective, network engineer perspective. It's just impossible to do this task, to provision the infrastructure, to manage the infrastructure quickly and efficiently. This is why we have the tools such as for example Ansible, Puppet or Chef. So the configuration management tools that makes configuration of the router systems or servers much easier and much more efficient. The way this type of um, tools work is that you have one central node that is pushing or pulling the configuration to our host nodes and that makes the process much more easier and efficient for engineers. The second question that you might be asked at the job interview is to simply explain how Ansible really works. So in this type of questions you can simply explain that well in Ansible communication between control nodes so where the machine so the machine where Ansible is installed and the commands are run from and the host node, so the ones that are being managed by Ansible here marked host, is established using SSH for Unix-like systems or for the Windows uh, host, we are using WinRM, so the Windows Remote Management Protocol. Basically, the way it works, the way Ansible works, is that the control node initiate the SSH connection to the target node using the protocol over uh, port 22, but the port can also be customized in the configure in Ansible configuration. Ansible uses this SSH connection to execute commands, transfer files, perform various tasks on the remote host. So we can say that, for example, from control node, we can execute provisioning of the systems with some specific servers like Apache, pinging, reading of the configuration files, updating the security keys or whatever it's needed, we can do it from the control node. And that gives us the benefit of not having the need to really SSH to each of the hosts, but we can simply use one control node and we can define in our inventory file that I will discuss later which nodes we should target and what operation we should run. Another important question during the job interview is that you might be asked to explain the key features of Ansible. So let's explore some of these uh, together. So first, first of all, you need to explain that Ansible is agentless. So this is one of the Ansible stands out feature. It's agentless architecture. So unlike other automation tools, Ansible doesn't require the installation of agents or clients on the control node. This simplifies the setup process, reduces the potential conflicts and makes the management much easier. Another very important feature of Ansible is that Ansible was written in Python and it's a widely known and adopted programming and language. So the advantage here is that a vast community is familiar with Python and making Ansible easy to work and to customize. This not only accelerates adoption but also allows users to leverage their already existing Python skills. When it comes for the simplicity, Ansible really shines. In comparison to other tools like Chef or Puppet, Ansible offers more straightforward and user-friendly experience. Its syntax is human-readable, making automation tasks less complex and more accessible. Another important feature of Ansible is its SSH security. So security is paramount and Ansible addresses this through secure communication. It utilizes SSH, as already mentioned in the previous slide, for connecting to the nodes, ensuring a passwordless yet robust security model. This approach guarantees the integrity and confidentiality of the data during the automation process. 
Another feature of Ansible, you can say, is the inventory file. So Ansible uses YAML for inventory files and it's a game changer. This simple, human-readable format makes defining and managing inventory really, really easy. This feature sets Ansible apart and it's not us, it's not available in a tool, tools such as Puppet or Chef. And it's offering a more efficient and intuitive approach for um, managing the infrastructure. Very important feature of Ansible is its push model based architecture. So in comparison to other configuration management tools, Ansible allows for a push based model architecture. And that means that when we write the code on the master, it's being pushed out to the slave nodes. And this approach really streamlines the deployment process offering centralized control and quick updates across the infrastructure. So comparing to other tools where we have a pool model, model, the tools are requesting the configuration from the control node, while in this case, we just use the control node to push the infrastructure to the, um, to the control nodes. Last but not least, it's worth to mention that Ansible is um, compatible with every Linux distribution. It's, Ansible is very versatile and can be, can be seamlessly installed on any Linux distribution. And this flexibility ensures that Ansible can integrate uh, into various environments, allowing users to leverage their preferred Linux distribution. So just in the conclusion, Ansible has agentless nature, a Python foundation, simplicity, SSH security, and YAM-based inventory that is supported by the push model architecture. It's very efficient, user-friendly automation tool used today's dynamic IT environments. During the job interview, you might be asked to compare different configuration management tools. So in this slide I have compared Ansible, Puppet and Chef. Let's start with the language this tool speaks. So basically Ansible communicates using YAM and Python while Puppet relies on Ruby and on Puppet DSL uh, which is the main specific language while Chef also uses uh, it's also based on on Ruby. Next up is architecture. Ansible takes the spotlight for being agentless as I have already explained. On the other hand, other configuration management tools such as Puppet or Chef operate on the agent server model where the agent on each of the nodes communicates with the central server. Chef follows a similar path with the client server architecture. When it comes to how they manage configuration, Ansible follow already explained push model where the configurations are being pushed from the central control machine, while Puppet and Chef, on the other hand, work with the pull model where clients peri periodically pull from the central server configuration updates. Then we can also see the ports that are being used. Ansible uses TCP port 22 for configuration, which is the SSH port, while Puppet uses own uh, path with TCP port 8140 and Chef uses uh, TCP port uh, 10002. Last but not least are the files that are being created and uh, Ansible introduces the playbook. It's a declarative configuration file written in YAML while Puppet creates a manifest and uh, Chef uses reci recipes. Each of them has a unique way of expressing configuration instructions. Today's episode we focus on the playbook and let me show you more about the playbook right now in the next question. Another very important question that you might be asked to explain is the Ansible architecture. Starting with playbooks, these serves as the blueprints for your workflow. Written in YAML, playbooks describe and execute tasks through Ansible. These are a combination of plays which consist of tasks such as, for example, updating packages, then installing some service such as Apache or MariaDB. Any task that you want your infrastructure to do, you define in playbook. Then we have inventory file that consists of devices, groups, host variables, templates and tasks. Along with inventory file, playbooks must be created to describe how to handle these devices, groups and variables. Another very important part of Ansible architecture are modules. So modules are reusable standalone scripts that Ansible uses to perform tasks. 
they are responsible for carrying out specific actions on remote hosts. Ansible provides a rich set of built-in modules for tasks like managing packages, copying files, managing users and many, many more. Users can also create and custom modules to extend Ansible functionality. Plugins in Ansible are extensions that can add functionality to the various parts of Ansible execution process. The purpose of plugins is to enhance Ansible capabilities by allowing users to extend or modify core functionalities. Plugins can be custom developed or leveraged from already existing sets provided by Ansible. So the way Ansible really works, you have a few different components that are correlated and interacting with each other, such as playbook, inventory, modules, plugins or APIs. And all of these elements together helped engineers to push the configuration to service or network infrastructure to provision the infrastructure the way with the services they intend to use. During the job interview, recruiter can also ask you to explain what are the ad hoc commands and when do you use it. You can simply explain that in Ansible, ad hoc commands are one-liners of short commands that are used to perform quick tasks without need for a playbook. Ad hoc commands are executed directly from command line and provide a way to interact with the remote systems without having a need to create and save the playbook file. I made a comparison between ad hoc and playbook commands. So basically, as I said, execution format is quite different because for the ad hoc, we, we just run the one line of commands that are executed from CLI. Later on in this video, you will see some examples on how do I run different modules using the ad hoc approach. Playbooks are used for the much more complex task. If we need to provision some more specific infrastructure, I would recommend to use the playbooks. Then we also have a logging and output comparison. So basically once you run ad hoc command, you will get immediately output on the command line. While if you run the playbook using Ansible playbook command, you will get detailed output, especially when you run with the different levels of the verbosity. Last but not least, the, you can see here the example of running the both out ad hoc commands and playbooks is different because for ad hoc commands we can just simply run for example Ansible all nodes and some specific module while for the playbook you have to run Ansible playbook and then name of the playbook.yaml. Preparing for Ansible interview requires familiarity with the location of Ansible executables and configuration files on a different Linux distribution. Let's explore paths for the Red Hat systems like CentOS and Debian based systems like Ubuntu. If someone asks you where you would find the executables Red Hat systems, then you can say that the files are in the user bin Ansible or user bin Ansible playbook folders. When it comes for the configuration of Ansible, then you would need to look at the Etsy fold, fold, folder under the Ansible. When we look at the Debian based systems like Ubuntu, executables are also in the user bin Ansible and user bin Ansible playbook, while the configuration files are also in Etsy slash Ansible. Find the exact location on your system for the different files. Remember, you can always use commands like which or where is. Another thing that you can be tested on are modules. So recruiter can ask you which modules did you use, which modules do you know. In this question, I will first list the modules and then we can do some quick demos so you can see how these modules work and what do they do. Really the basic ones are the five that I listed here. So it's a shell, copy, file, service and package module. Shell, it's used to run shell commands on your target host. We can also use copy if you want to copy file from one node to another. Third module is the file. So this one sets the attributes of files on the target, uh, target hosts. We have a service module that manages different services for us on the target host, such as Apache. And then very basic one, which is a package module, YAM for Red Hat based system or apt for Debian system. So this one will help us to install, upgrade or remove packages on our host node. And now let's look at the practicalities of these modules. Let's run some demonstration now using the ad hoc commands. Let's try to test different modules first. Let's try ping. I already have my web server defined in an inventory file and we can see that the ping is working. We got the success reply. Let's try a different module now. Let's try run some shell commands in our on our web01. So let's run ls. 
nice and we have the listing of the different different files on our web01 host node i just still want to remember that we are on our control node so the one that has ansible install let's run the fat module which is now which is yum and let's install httpd server we are using yam not app because this is my host node are um, using centos okay and it's failed because i missed the become and last but not least let's now try whether the httpd is active so for that we're going to use command and now let's see whether systemctl will indicate that the httpd is indeed working systemctl status and now the name of the service which is httpd and let's just run it now nice we can see that the service is active so indeed the provision was successful Okay, let's stay with modules. The next question that you might be asked during the job interview is to simply explain setup module, which is a very important one used to gather facts about remote hosts. These facts include information about the host system, such as, for example, hardware details, network interfaces, operation systems, details about the environment variables, and many, many more. Facts gathered by the setups modules are automatically available as uh, variables in a subsequent task in your playbooks. Let's now run a quick demo so you can see how to use setup module from both ad hoc commands perspective and playbooks. Okay, so now let's try to run ad hoc command with setup module and we can see how many different information we have from the output but is that really something that we need to have all of this so i also wrote a playbook that is uh, that will print only the key information that i need so i set up the gather host as a true and then i define tasks that will print the using debug module print some of the key information that i needed so let's run the ansible playbook and the name of our playbook which is playbook facts.yaml and now we run it and we can see that it's successful the playbook printed for us the all the key information that we need for this last question today i have prepared a comparison between ansible and terraform as both tools are quite similar and very widely popular among devops engineers the first difference is the fact that Ansible is a bit older technology comparing to Terraform because it has been in the development since 2012. It is very mature technology owned currently by the Red Hat, while Terraform is rapidly evolving since 2014 and is currently owned by HashiCorp. Also very important to compare the execution model. So imperative against the declarative model. So Ansible is more focused on describing the specific steps to achieve a configuration, while Terraform concentrate on declaring the desired state without detailing the steps. And uh, for defining the infrastructure that we want to achieve, we use YAML in uh, playbooks, while for Terraform will use HashiCorp configuration language. The last but not least, when we look at the different use case comparison, I would use Ansible for tasks like installing software, configuration of the services and ensuring consistency across multiple servers. While HashiCorp tool Terraform I would use for creating and updating cloud resources such as for example virtual machines, network storage or whatever that you have in your infrastructure. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to subscribe as it helps me to create better materials for you and help to build the community. Thanks.